Oh, would you look at that. Almost as if I measured it and CNC machined the park custom. Welcome back to Cloud42, I'm James. Well, last time we CNC machined a set of mounting feet for my squat rack. And I mentioned that I ran into one other problem when I was installing it that required the use of a CNC mill. Let's go over to the rack and I will show you the issue. So the two sides of the squat rack here are connected in two places. There's a rail that goes across down here on the floor that's bolted into both sides. And then there's a pull-up bar up here on the top that's bolted onto both sides. And when I put this pull-up bar on originally, I started running into problems where once I bolted everything down, this foot would rise up off of the platform. And it took me forever to figure out what was going on. And it turns out the problem is up here with the pull-up bar. I've got it working right now with some shims in, but I want to come up with a more permanent solution. Let me undo some bolts and show you what the issue is. Okay, I got the bolts out of this side and you can see it's opened up a little bit, but the reason that it's opened up is because I've got uh, 550 pounds of plates hanging on the sides of this thing. In fact, I probably shouldn't be taking the bolts out with it in that condition. But you can see that when I squeeze it together, the bolt holes do line up. And the reason they line up right now is because I've got some brass shims over in this side. Let me take those shims out and show you how this is without them. Okay, these are the shims that I pulled out of the other side. Uh, I'd have to measure these up, but I think I've got two 15 thou shims and an eight. So we're looking at what, 38, almost 40 thou that I had to put behind the bracket on the other side to pull this into position. And you can see that now with the shims out, this does not line up at all. Even if I just squeeze this over, you can see that it's significantly behind the post. Now I can wrench this into position and put the bolts in, and that is in fact what I was doing initially, but that is actually enough twisting force to lift this rack foot off the ground. Now once everything's loaded down, it'll probably be all right. But if I get to the point where I've got most of the plates off of the rack and on the squat bar and I'm crashing in after a heavy set, that foot is going to lift and it's going to put, it's going to pull the screws out of the plywood. And so what I need to do is get this shimmed over. Now the brass shims work, but I'd really like to do something a little bit nicer. I'd like to make a full bearing wedge to go over on the other side and we'll make that at the CNC mill. But I need to understand what angle is needed on the wedge. So I know this is a three inch post and a two inch flange. So there should be a half inch offset. And I'm looking here at what the offset actually is. And I'm reading, oh, about an inch and nine sixteenths. So I think we're gonna need an offset of about an inch and a sixteenth over the length of this bar. And the bar is 43 inches long. So we did an inch and a 16th of offset over a 43 inch distance. And we can go into the computer and uh, just use that information to just drop a diagram. Don't even have to do any math and we can get the right angle for the wedge. Let's go in the computer and design something. Okay, we need to machine a shim here. So let's sketch something up. And I don't, I know that I need to taper it uh, so that I get an inch and a sixteenth of movement in the other end of the bar and the bar is 43 inches long So um, I think what I want to do is just use a sketch to Diagram this out and not have to do any kind of math 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of sketch out a cross section here of the of the wedge. So L for line, and I'll just go like this, like this, like this, and like that. Okay, so now I've got a closed shape for my wedge. Now the dimensions of this are, the width of this thing is going to be two inches. So I'll just put in two. And I think I want the thickness of the thin edge here to be um, maybe 20 thou. But uh, before we get to that, I want to get the angle up here right so that I can actually look at it and judge what I'm seeing. So what I'm going to do is hit L again for line, and I'm going to draw some construction lines. I'm going to draw, draw a construction line that comes straight out here, down at a 90 degree angle, and then back to this point. Now what I'm going to do is set this line and the top of the wedge to be collinear. So then I can set the dimensions on these construction lines to represent the long arm. So I know I want this to move over dimension of uh, 1 and a 16th, 1.0625. And I know that the length of that bar is 43 inches. So I'll say 43. And now what that's done is without doing any math, it's figured out what the angle of this line is, hence the angle of the line on the top of the wedge. So if out 43 inches, I want to move that over uh, 1.063 inches, so an inch and a sixteenth, then now I have the correct dimension or I have the correct angle for the top of the wedge. So on the thin side of the wedge, I'm going to make this 20 thou. And so now we have the cross section of the wedge, two inches wide, 20 thou thick on the thin side, and then over on the thick side, it's gonna be uh, about 70 thou. And that sounds about right. So now I will just select that and say extrude, and we'll go eight inches. And that gives us the rough size and shape of the wedge. And now we need to put the holes in it. So I will just sketch on the bottom here and I will, let me rotate this around so it fits on the screen better. And I'll do another line, construction, and we'll just grab a midpoint here, pull that across, we'll grab another midpoint line, pull it across here, turn off construction, hit C for circle, and we'll make a circle here. Now I want this to pass a 5 8 bolt, which would be uh, 625, let's make it 6. 75 thou, so we get a little bit of slop, uh, make this thing easier to install. I'll say mirror that circle around this center line. And I know those holes are six inches on center. So dimension between the hole centers, six. And now we've got our holes. And we'll just select both of those, extrude, and cut those uh, to the distance through all. And now we have our wedge modeled up. Now we need to figure out how to machine this. Now this is very thin, so there's not a good way to hold it. So I'm planning on using painter's tape and super glue. So I have uh, some material that's two inches wide and an eighth of an inch thick, 125 thou. This will easily fit inside that. So I'll just cut a piece a little over eight inches long and we will super glue it down to a platen in the mill and uh, mill this out. Now, like any good cooking show, I have one of these that I prepared earlier that already has the cam set up so we can take a look at it. And the setup is actually quite simple. I'm going to start with a 3D adaptive. And what this is going to do is it's going to come in here. Um, on this 3D adaptive, I've set a few things. So we've got our 12,000 RPM, 54 inches a minute cutting feed rate. Uh, the geometry is just going to be the entire thing. Stock contours, the entire thing. And as heights, I am going to offset from the model bottom by 5 thou because I don't want to machine all the way through because I don't want to be picking up the tape and I don't want to be picking up the, um, the, the super glue and gumming up the cutter, especially as I'm cutting inside these pockets. So I'll just leave 5 thou. It should leave a very thin membrane here that should be easy to punch through. And so then um, over here on stock to leave, I'm going to leave 10 thou so that as we machine this top surface, we're going to, those steps will be 10 thou above the finished surface. And I want to do a lot of steps so we get pretty close to the contour. So I set my fine step down here to 10 thou. And when we take a look at that, um, 
and simulate this to show the stock, what it's going to do is it's going to come down here and it's going to trim the ends. Then it's going to come in, do a spiral um, helical entry, and then hog out the center of those holes. And let me turn off the toolpath here so you can see better. And it's just going to come around on the surface and start cutting it. And it's going to start cutting it in steps. So this should give us the rough shape of the wedge. And so once we get that, then we just need to smooth it out. And to smooth it out, I'm using a parallel strategy. And parallel is set up with the same tool. I am going to slow the cutting feed rate down to one thou per two, 36 inches a minute because I'm going to be climbing up this. Uh, I'm not going to be milling flat. I'm not going to be tilting the part. I'm going to actually be milling uphill. So only the front corner of the cutter is going to be making contact. So it is going to leave a slightly rough surface. And I want that as fine as possible. So I'm going to slow it down so those ripples are only one thou apart. Um, if I were using a ball end mill for this or a corner radius end mill, it would be smoother. But for this application, it's just not going to matter. So uh, I got this in here. So this is going to, on the height, it's actually going to leave nothing. So this should take out that 10 thou stock to leave that we left and leave a smooth surface on the top. And you can control the direction of this uh, by coming in here with pass direction. And I have that set to 90 degrees because by default it was going the long direction on the part and I want to go the short direction. So we're climbing up the hill. Um, so I set that to 90 degrees and I had to mess around with the direction because you have one way and other way and both ways and other way actually gave me what I wanted. So if we take a look at the simulation here, go through the adaptive or the, uh, yeah, the 3D adaptive, then what this will do is it'll come back and just flatten the surface of this. It doesn't pass over those holes. I know John Saunders showed something in a video recently, or I don't know when it was. Um, I watched it recently about how to patch these holes so that it doesn't stop and, and restart on either side of it. I don't care enough to mess with that. So we'll just let it run and this will smooth out and give us the top of our wedge at least very close to dimension for this application. It should be plenty. And you can see because I left that five thou uh, here, it is going to leave a membrane on the bottom and a little membrane on the end. No problem. I'll just take that off with a, uh, with a deburring tool, with a Noga tool and then not mess around with actually cutting into the tape. I could cut into the tape. The last time I did that, um, I ended up gumming up the end of the cutter and chips were sticking to it. And I'd just rather not mess around with that. So we'll give this a try. And if that turns out to be too hard to remove, then we'll learn something and do something different next time. So let me post this and print a setup sheet and let's go out to the mill and actually make the part. This is the material we're going to use. This is a two inch wide strip of aluminum, eighth of an inch thick, uh, except it's actually a little bit thicker than that. Um, it's sold as eighth inch material, but I believe this stuff actually is like 137. Yeah, 137, 138, 138 and a half. So it's a little bit thicker. Uh, we modeled that in the computer, so that shouldn't be a problem. And we will just go stick this down. Now I'm going to use uh, super glue machining for this. So I've got my uh, block of aluminum in here and we'll put some blue painters tape on it and stick this part down with super glue to hold it. Okay, I got a 246 block to use as a weight. And a 123 block to use for alignment. This is just Loctite 414. I'm gonna try to make sure I get all the way out to the corners. As we are gonna be machining out there and I don't want them to pop up.
Okay. And then we'll throw a couple of can't twist clamps on the corners, on the ends, just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then we'll let this sit for a few minutes to let the glue grab and uh, I'll be back. Okay, I gave that about 10 minutes for the super glue to set. That should be plenty, even though I just pulled it out of the refrigerator and it hadn't warmed up. That looks and feels pretty solid to me. Okay, it looks like the zero point is on the top in the center. So let's grab the Heimer and find that. I'm always paranoid about having the right tool selected because there is a situation where I enter tool 99, but then I run a program and the program tells Mach 3 to load the tool offset for some other tool like tool 15 that I'm milling with. And then even though the display here says 99, tool 99 is not selected. And then if you zero out on your Heimer, then it'll end up with the wrong Z height. So I, I just always switch the tool to something else and then switch it back to 99 just to be sure. And I can watch the Z offset and I can see that it's working. Okay, this is very close on the Z, but uh, it's not touching. And I uh, will just walk around and get all the edges. Okay, it looks like this whole program is done just with the one tool 15, which is a quarter inch end mill. This is a three flute uh, variable flute for aluminum end mill from Lakeshore Carbide. And it's coated and uh, so it should run easily at 12,000 RPM. Okay, I'm gonna close the curtain here a little bit because I don't want the snowstorm to be all over the shop. And let's see how this runs. This is a really thin part. It gets down to 20 thou. I've done some things as thin as 10 thou, but um, it starts to get kind of dicey. And so we will see how this runs.
Wow, that is beautiful. That turned out great. And we didn't break through. That was the plan. Feel a little bit of a lump there, but that's that's because of the way it kept restarting, so it didn't drag all the way up and across. I think uh, John Saunders had a video recently where he showed, or something, somebody on NYC uh, CNC explained how to avoid that. But this is just fine, and if it's an issue, I'll uh, just flat file it a little bit. In fact. Oh yeah. Problem solved. The issue is because it didn't just mill across the holes, it came and dove in on the top side so you didn't get the benefit of the leading edge of the cutter taking off a little bit of material as it came up the ramp. But that solves that. Now let's see if we can get it off. Just try using a putty knife for this. And this front edge is flexible, so I probably don't want to get under that. Oh no, it's gonna be fine. Wow, that is great. Just need to punch out these holes. See how thin is that? It should have been pretty thin. Oh yeah, there it goes. I probably should have milled that a little bit thinner, but uh, this is going to work. It's just going to take me a minute. Let me do this and uh, I'll meet you over at the squat rack and we'll see how it works. Okay, this is the side of the rack where the wedge needs to go in. I've got the wedge here and you can see, maybe you can see, one side is thicker than the other. And this will just slide in behind this flange after I take the bolts out and it should then fix the alignment problems that we have over here on the other side if we did everything correctly. So let me take out some bolts and put this wedge in. There are the old shims that I pulled out. Don't need those anymore. Okay, now does it line up? Oh, would you look at that? Almost as if I measured it and CNC machined the part custom. It's nice when these things work out. I mean, keep in mind, I did measure this with a tape measure. Um, so let me grab the other two bolts and put them in. <laughs> it just slides right in, don't even have to align it.
And that appears to be that. Alignment wedge just goes in there. Uh, it's very nice, hardly even see it. And uh, that solved the problem completely. It's perfectly lined up. Now, how does this kind of stuff happen? You know, yes, this is a rogue rack. Yes, I, I paid, you know, a retail price for it. And yeah, maybe I should expect perfection. But, you know, right now, I think we take what we can get and maybe my expectations are too low. You know, I had a problem with one of these spotter arms. Uh, initially, I just talked to Rogue. They immediately just shipped me another one. No questions asked. But the situation up here, this isn't as big a deal. Um, because it was easy to fix. It's just a matter of shimming. When I had this set up on carpet upstairs, I didn't even notice it. It's only when I get it down here on this platform where everything is solid that I really notice any kind of an issue. And it is just a squat rack, right? You know, I'm a machinist, or at least I play one on YouTube, but um, you know, it is, in the end of the day, just a squat rack. And I wanted to make it a little bit better, so I did. And it was an excuse to try a new machining technique, machining thin parts on super glue like that, and to uh, try to machine a wedge. I'd never attempted that before, and uh, it worked out great. Now I've got another tool to put in my toolbox. So I think that's it. I think this rack is now ready to go. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment. I'd like to know what you think. Thank you for watching. Yeah, it works.